Today I'm going to be sharing my view board, which is created by ViewSonic, who are the sponsors of this video. I'm going to showcase how I've used this for many years within my class to add lots of engagement and also make lessons a little bit more exciting. I'm able to adapt and edit my Google Slides, and you can also do this with Microsoft PowerPoint presentations. I'll show you exactly what I do to do that and then some of the different features that are extremely innovative built into my view board so that you can get started straight away. With Google Jamboard soon being discontinued, now is the perfect time to check out my view board as the perfect replacement. To access my view board, you need to go onto ViewSonic's website. Once you've done that, you'll be able to download it. If you've got an M1 MacBook, you'll be able to download it through Apple. I'm currently using it on my iPad and that's what I'm going to be sharing it with. You can also do it if you've got Windows 10 on Microsoft and download it through there. And you can also do it through Android too, but they've got little suggestions that you might need uh, when you're on their website too. Once you've downloaded it, it's really simple to get set up. You then go through to their sign up page. You can sign up through Apple, Google, or Microsoft. You can also use their companion app if you want to do that too. Personally, I went through Google and then that takes you through to their main page. You will be able to see in the top left hand corner, you will have the email that shows you that you're signed up and you're able to then use all of the different features. You don't have to sign up. However, it gives you more features when you do. So to start off with, with my viewboard, I want to show you some of the basic features and then take you through some of the more complex. So as we will always see, we've got the pen and then from the pen, we've also got things like the highlighter. We've got AI pen that I'll show you slightly later on uh, and a couple of other different pens too. We've got our rubber section, normal rubber, and then we've got our lasso that deletes things. If I then had some highlighter and I wanted to delete everything, I can do that. And I use these features extensively as I'm going. From there in the bottom left hand corner, you'll be able to see the backgrounds. There's all sorts of different backgrounds. Of course, you can change the color of one of the backgrounds. You can do that to this page or all pages. Now, if you're wondering what I mean by all pages, where it's got the blue document with the plus sign, that allows you to add different pages. The button next to that with the two, that shows you what pages you've got. So if I add another one, you'll be able to see I've got three different pages. Now, if I decided to change the background to green, to all pages, you would then see it's green on all pages. If I go back to one, and I wanted to change this again to something different, you can see that there's different pictures. Pictures would then go through to my drive, uh, but this colorful thing uh, with the ViewSonic is, is their pre-existing uh, backgrounds that you can then integrate. So from here, if I go into grids, some of them are premium that you can access. Uh, there's a free sign up for premium for 30 days. You can then decide as you're going through some of these features that I'll tell you whether they're premium, not premium, whether it's for you. But if I go down to this one, of course, this is something that I'm going to use quite frequently. I'm just going to apply that to this page. This is your squares. I can then go on to the hands. The hands will then allow me to move around. If I tap on the hand again, you'll see that it's uh, it's in the bottom corner. If I make a little note, tap something like this, you'll see that I've got that there. But if I zoom out, you'll see that I've got lots of different squares. That's because this my view board is what's called an infinity canvas. That means that I can zoom in and out of different sections as and when needed. And it's really straightforward to do that. Um, if I go back onto the backgrounds, I can also see that there's uh, lines. Now with lines, what I like is that they've also got right at the bottom, this one here is handwriting lines. I cannot explain the amount of times where I've hand drawn handwriting lines on my whiteboard just to make things easy. But having this open throughout the day, it just makes things a little bit easier. So if I'm zooming into this now, and I go onto the pen, and I wanna make this a little bit smaller to make sure it's, it's almost like a, a pencil type thing, uh, I can, of course, change the color. So I just use cursive. Of course, I should have capitals. Gosh, Thomas. As you can see, I need a little bit of practice, but I haven't used this in a while. <laughs> so I can then go rub it out if I need to. I can use the hand to zoom out. And you can see that just using this on a regular basis with the class is great. But what you can do is you can import Google Slides into this, which I'm gonna show you now. It just makes things way, way more easier. Uh, a couple more features before I show you how to do that. This uh, green man is just the present section that just moves him out of the way. Um, and then I'm gonna show you some of the other features once I've uploaded some of the Google Slides too. So 
This box with the blue things coming out of it is called the magic box. There's all sorts of different features available inside the magic box. It's like your toolbox full of all sorts of different things. Um, as and when you sign into Google, you will then be able to access your Google Drive. And through your Google Drive, you'll be able to upload your PDFs, your presentations, all sorts of different media. So I've got sticky notes that I can just add in. If I just add that in, I can then tap on this. I can just move that around using the uh, select tool. Um, I've got all sorts of mathematical tools that I'm gonna show you slightly later on. This here is the camera. I'm gonna show you break the fourth wall here and uh, show you my uh, front camera. There we go. So you can see I'm looking at myself with the things behind. So I'm just gonna click off that. I could take a screenshot of that camera, insert it straight away. And as you can see here, I can also do that through the uh, my view board too. So that's inputted that. Or if I wanna get rid of or move those, I can do that, I can change the layering of them. Uh, there's different elements that I can add into. So for example, if I wanna add in an arrow, I'll just add that in in the corner right up there. And then I can just change where I put that. I can make it bigger, smaller, flip it round if I wanted to, add a different one in. Um, if I wanted to uh, change this, I can copy it and I can uh, paste that as well. Uh, if I wanted to lock that into place, I can lock it. I can spin it using the little spinner button. And we can see it spinning, 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 spinning. And then I can save, if I press the little cloud with the up arrow, I would be able to just save that as well. I can cut that out and then I'll be able to paste that slightly later on if I wanted to do that. Uh, two. So now I'm going to show you how to upload Google Slides. From here, I'm going to press the Google, I'm going to go into my drive, and you can see I've already got something here for my view board, something that I've made earlier. I can select the different slides that I want to put in for today. I'm going to select all of them. You can import it as an object or as a background. I'm always going to recommend importing it as an object because you can then move around the different elements that are within your, uh, your Google Slides. Little bit of a problem, something to be aware of, is making sure that you have different, um, having the right formatting. I like to use Arial because I think my viewboard handles Arial better. Uh, if you use other uh, different fonts, it will turn it back to Arial and that can mess around with the formatting. And you'll sometimes find that with different elements on your slides too. So just, you might wanna just spend a little bit of time when you're on these things uh, to import that. So let's get started. So as you can see, I've imported that slide. And then as we can see, if I wanted to change them round, I can do that really simply. So, as you can see, here is my slide. Uh, if I tap in this corner, I've got all those old slides. I can delete these if I need to. And I can just go back onto this. So this is my uh, view board tutorial. So something that's really cool, once I've got my slides manipulated and into it, I can then go through, as you can see, that one's bigger because I just need to move that in and out and I can change that around. If I wanted to annotate around it, I can do that. There's a me. Um, I can also then go back and you can see that that's there and I can move myself in and around and I can then go into the magic box and I can go on the internet. So from there, I can then make, perhaps go on something like mm, Ted Ed. If I accept that. I could then put this logo in and I can start to insert pages from the internet. If I wanted to annotate this, I can do that with my extremely bad handwriting. And then I could take a screenshot of that. And as you can see, that's then inserted multiple times. I can then use this, move it round. I can put that there. I can make that come across, I can annotate that. And you can imagine doing a lesson like this where you're just able to insert information from the internet, whether it's facts for a history or geography lesson, uh, you can just really start to play around with this. Another really useful tool that I can have is the YouTube tool. So here you can see I've searched planet Earth. If I wanted to then watch that, I can do that within the browser without even needing to leave it, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, in addition to that, I can also insert images from the web, 
But so again, if I wanted to type in globe there, search, I can then put something like that in. And I'll be able to uh, use my tools to mess around with that again. Make it smaller, add another one in. So as you can see here, this is a typical lesson, perhaps something like English, where we're identifying the features. We've got the cat sat on the desk at the moment. Let's highlight all the different nouns. We'll come through to the highlighter tool. Um, so the cat is a noun, and the desk is a noun too. But one of my favorite features is the AI pen. Now the AI pen is a premium feature. Um, this here is extremely fun. So the cat sat on the desk. Let's say we're trying to do something like talk for writing where we're modeling the images that help children memorize the sentence. Um, I can then try and draw a cat. Whiskers, here we go. This is always the uh, interesting one. There we go, that's what I'm trying to draw, is the, uh, the magic cat. So then, using my selector tool, I can either make it bigger, smaller, change it round, flip it round if I wanted to, but the cat's out on the desk and I've used that AI pen, which is extremely exciting to just add that picture straight in. Uh, I've also used my highlighter tool to change things. As you can see, this person can actually be changed. Now, I find that mind blowing because that's something that I made in Google Slides. It's then been imported into my view board and I can actually change the presentation. Typically when you put things into something like this, it's just bang, straight as an image and you can't change things as you're going around. There's all sorts of different elements that I can change around. Uh, I just love it. I can change the, this text. Really effective, really simple, but effective way to just quickly uh, manipulate your lessons. So now let's go to here. This is my math lesson. I'll just make it slightly smaller because I can do that. Now I've got a few different instructions. I'm going to go into my magic box and you can see some mathematical tools. Um, let's pretend there's six different questions. I'm going to choose whether I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, or six. I can then go into the dice, which is found in the math section. Um, and then I can roll it. Let's see which question we're going to go for. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're going to need to answer question number three. I can, of course, change it to A, B, C, or perhaps upload my own images or names or things like that. Um, I can change the color of the dice, but that's not something I'm particularly interested in right now. I can then go back in and say, right, we've got question number three. I'm going to go into the timer section. I'm going to say, right, you've got one minute to answer question number three. I'm going to press play. And then from there, the children have to answer question three in a certain amount of time. If I wanted to model it as shown earlier, I could then have a different page where instead of answering those questions, I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to use the grids within that background section that I showed you before. And I can uh, mess around with this and I can then answer that question. Let's see what the question was. Uh, five times 14. Trust it to be the one that's the most difficult. I actually don't know plus the two, 70, so it's gonna equal 70. I hope that's right. <laughs> and then we go back. So let's show you some more of the math tools. We've got math tools that are available. You've got um, a calculator, so I could then go back, check that question, five times 14 equals 70, happy days, I'm not fired today. Um, if I wanted to go into other tools that are available, protractor, so if we're doing an angles lesson, that's great. I can then zoom in to certain section. All the information there is looking good. There's the logo, big face. Um, I can also go on to ruler. Little hack that I really like with the ruler, which is quite cool, is if you have your ruler lined up and then you go into the pen, when you do that, it's gonna line it up. I just find that to be quite smart. Um, in the shapes tool, so where you see the multiple shapes, there's all sorts of different shapes available. Now it says I want to show a pentagon. So you can see the pentagon is the five-sided shape right there. And if I go back into the select tool, you can move that around. But as you can see, there's all sorts of different shapes available. I think that's brilliant because one of the things I sometimes struggle with in teaching is having to measure up and try and draw it and things like that. It just becomes a bit of a mess. Of course, you can choose different colors, but you can also choose different 3D shapes. So if you're doing a 3D shape lesson, that's also really nice to be able to just quickly manipulate and do a cylinder. And we'd say, right, which one's the 2D, which one's the 3D? Okay, this is 2D. 
it's 3D. You could of course name it and things like that. If we go into different shapes again, we've got this section for different graphs. Um, you could quickly draw something up if needed. And then I could do that on slightly bigger. I could do that on the, the paper that I've got on this side potentially. So if I'm trying to uh, just quickly Right, let's do a different lesson where we're looking at um, some statistics and things like that. So you can see, I'm just giving you a showcase of all the different tools that are available. Uh, finally, this is your table. So if I just do something like that, you can see it start to pop up already. So for video, if I wanted to put a video of multiplication in, multiplication, I can then find something that's appropriate, tap that, Add it in, make it smaller, make it as small as possible, and just drag that round. So there we go. And then if I've got my hands, you can see starting to, to really take shape. I've got my video, I've got my questions. I could then perhaps if I needed to bring that over, I can do that and then say that that's perhaps going to be the video there. Again, so many different things that you can do with this. The AI pen is the only premium feature that I've shown you so far, but I love the way that you can just quickly do that. Now, from here, we've got all sorts of different tools available. If I wanted to download that, I can then come into the file, the yellow file section at the bottom, and I can press this, which will allow me to download it as a PDF. If I just change it to maths. I can save that file, and I can save it wherever I need to have it. In addition to that, if I wanted to share this with everyone with a QR code, I would just let it process. And what that's doing, it's allowing me to process it so that when I share this with my pupils, they can either just scan it with their device and it will pop up on their device, or it's gonna give me a short URL. And with that short URL, I'll also be able to pull that URL, put it somewhere like Google Classroom, uh, and then the children will be able to see all the different information as a PDF that we've done so far. The final thing that I'm gonna show you is hidden in the magic box. If you scroll across, you'll see the A, B, C. This is a premium feature called Pop Quiz. If you tap onto that, you'll see that you can ask a question and then pupils who have added themselves into the classroom, into the lesson, will also be able to answer those questions. So the question here would be something like, how was, the lesson. So I've asked the question, how was the lesson? And then from there, the pupils can then go away and they would then be able to answer that question once I've shared it with them. There's all sorts of different ways that the children would then be able to answer that, share their responses. And then if I had more than one person signed into this, I would then be able to see their different responses integrated within this question. In another video from ViewSonic, they showcased how you could perhaps ask children to draw a tree and then the tree would then pop up and you could see different people's examples of that. Of course, if you had a class of 30 children, you would then be able to see all those different examples. You would be able to tap on different children's answers and let those answers pop up. In the notification area, right in the top hand corner, you were then able to see who's already answered that question and then receive those notifications from there. So there we go. That gives you a whistle stop tour of all of the different features available through my view board, which is available on ViewSonic. I also want to take this opportunity to say thank you once again to ViewSonic for sponsoring this video. Genuinely, this is something that I've used many, many times with my classes to be able to edit and manipulate Google Slides to show all sorts of different videos and features and bits of media too. So I definitely suggest that you just go sign up, check it out, see if it's worth it for you guys and I can guarantee that the different features available will blow your mind. ViewSonic also have an amazing educator community. Through there, you'll be able to find all sorts of technology tips to use inside your classroom. Definitely check it out. It's fantastic to be part of such a valuable community that can offer you support in the classroom too. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, feel free to subscribe to the channel, like it as normal, and hopefully I will see you in another one. Until then, I'm out.